the conferences, it looks like they are pumping the brakes on the 12-team playoff. And and it has a lot to do with the Pac-12, who George Klyovkov at Pac-12 Media Days came out and said, we don't think expansion is required to continue to compete and thrive. That said, the fallout from Texas and Oklahoma gives us an opportunity to once again consider expansion. Uh, he said, we have already had significant inbound interest from many schools. We will work with our uh, presidents and chancellors to evaluate those opportunities. And, of course, that's got to be the remaining Big 12 schools, right? Like it's, Some people have reached out because it's up to the schools to reach out. None of these other conferences can steal from each other due to these grant of rights contracts and all that. So, um, But the the whole thing about pumping the brakes on this 12-team playoff, right? It seems it we knew that this was happening very, very fast, right? The 12-teamer. And we even questioned they got a contract for like five more years. Yeah. Like, what in the world is happening? And I think the majority of that was, now that I'm looking at how things are going, this was ESPN pushing the SEC to get this thing done so that they could go ahead and get the contract rights for it beyond however many years. Because ESPN did not want this thing to go to the open market, and yet the Pac-12 for sure wants it to go to the open market. Open market. The, right. big tw- or the Big Ten was not ever even involved in the conversations. Remember, the committee was Jack Swarbrick from Notre Dame, Greg Sankey, SEC commissioner, Bob Bowlesby, Big 12 commissioner, and the Mountain West commissioner, Craig Thompson. Those guys kind of bull rushed this thing through. I say bull rushed because they, they worked for two years on it, right? In in secret, in quiet, whatever. But they did this. And That's what I would say, too, if I rushed something through. If yeah. I finished a project over the weekend that I had nine months to work on, yeah, I would say that I worked on it for nine months. Yes, but they, yeah. they got it through very quickly. this weekend, though. And yeah, they, and I'm sure, I'm sure that the SEC did not want this Texas Oklahoma stuff to get out as quickly as it did, and they wanted to get the the playoff stuff done because if you've got Texas and Oklahoma along with LSU, Florida, Alabama, like you are, I, I would almost say you're guaranteed four of those twelve spots every so year. I, I would agree with I would agree with four, and, and I would agree this, with four. But I think that's where here's the thing though, I think that's it. And if you're the rest of the country, I think you're okay with that. Yeah, I think so. But I, I look at this, and and now I think these other conferences are like, hold up. Like, this isn't exactly what we signed up for. We thought we were going to get, you know, more of everybody. And, and you will, but, but... Hang on. How many did we think the SEC was going to get if we don't bring Texas and Oklahoma in? We all assumed that every year we would get three or four anyway. Well, we were talking about three or four, but now we're talking about the possibility of four or five, right? No, but five's not going to happen. We're going to cannibalize ourselves. At some point in time, you're going to let somebody in with three or four losses. Well, yes, absolutely. But either because way. Because that's how math works. This is, but this is the why they're, they're pumping the brakes. teams all be undefeated. That ain't going to work. Right. No, of course not. But but that's what I'm saying is that's why they are pumping the brakes on this. They are stopping it and saying, all right, hold on. we gotta we got to rethink this whole thing. I don't and, understand that at all. I think, I think, A, I'm okay with stopping it until all of this – realignment bullshit settles that i'm okay with letting letting the dust settle on whatever's happening happen whatever's going to happen to the big 12 teams let it happen and then pick this back up i'm okay with that but stopping it because we need to rethink it because we think the sec will have too much power i don't once again this is a group of schools let's say there's 64 legitimate schools 80 legitimate schools that want to compete in football now they're in various levels of good, but they all want to be compete. They all put money and effort and energy in trying to be good at football. Okay. If that's the case and the SEC is made up of 16 of those schools, regardless of how big they are, the other group is far larger and going to have more voices, louder cries, and, and they're going to get just as much, if not more, now than they would have when the SEC was only 12 schools back in the day. Like, yeah. the SEC getting bigger doesn't necessarily make the SEC stronger overall. It, it does. It means the best that comes out of the SEC is is the best, unquestionably, and nobody's going to argue that. But the best team doesn't always win when you get into a playoff. When you get into a two-team play, a two-game playoff, that ain't, that ain't testing anybody. But when you have to play through a bracket of, of a playoff, then you can slip up at any time. 
Yes, absolutely. And, and the, the best team rarely wins the Super Bowl. The best team rarely wins the NCAA tournament. The best team, I guess in best of sevens, the best team wins all the time in the NBA. But it ain't you know, nothing. when you play a one-game elimination, the best team rarely wins when you go through a wild bracket. So this would actually benefit all the other conferences and all the other schools. Their fear of it is foolish. It's just absolutely foolish. I don't think the SEC would get any more than four teams in, no matter what. There's never a year where we'd get five, which means if you go to 12, you've got a lot more schools that have an opportunity to play in this thing and compete. I'm 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 going to bet all the other power conferences are going to get two in almost every year. And that makes them a lot more money than just getting one in in a bunch of SEC schools and then a couple of also rands. Let me present another uh, another case to you. The SEC wants this playoff thing done. They want it done with ESPN, who is their their partner. That's right. right? The SEC tells all these other conferences, hey, it is in your best interest to go along with this playoff and get it done now with ESPN or hey we're open to more expansion and all of your best teams have already reached out to us your Ohio State and Michigan and USC and Oregon etc cetera, etc cetera, have all reached out y'all do with it what you want to if you want to pump the brakes on this and make it four teams that's cool but we are going to take all of the television revenue and it's up to y'all what you want to do I don't understand how the SEC would take all the television revenue. If the SEC has USC and Oregon and Ohio State and whatever, they take the best teams from these other conferences. Yeah, you're talking about the- adding the SEC, adding those teams to the SEC? Yes. yes. No, that's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. I mean, we didn't think Texas and Oklahoma would happen. No, no, that's not true. We did not think that. Years ago when conference alignment happened, everyone talked – Texas or Oklahoma could come or or Florida State and Clemson could come. Now, we always thought that if the SEC ever expanded again, it would be big boys coming, all right? They weren't taking little little schools, okay? Agreed, and I'm not talking about I'm taking little schools right now. I'm talking about I'm taking the best of these other conferences. Those other – there's zero chance that Ohio State would want to come to the SEC. There's zero chance because now Ohio State is the biggest monster not in the SEC – and they control the landscape of all the other 80-something schools that, that, that are left outside of the SEC. Now, don't get me wrong. I agree with you on that. I agree because if it was just about controlling the, the landscape or whatever. Why wouldn't whatever. the SEC – hang on. I know that the SEC – if the SEC already has a partnership with ESPN, yeah. okay, we've already got that partnership, we've already got that contract, we've already got that money. Wouldn't it be in the SEC's best interest, seeing that every year they're probably going to get four teams in, wouldn't it be in their best interest to allow the playoff to go to an open bid and the highest bidder win it? Why do they care that ESPN gets it, their quote-unquote TV partner? They don't give a shit. If they can make more money because Fox overpays for it or CBS or NBC overpays for the thing, why wouldn't that be in the SEC's best interest? SEC's not ESPN. I, I agree with you. We're just conference partners, and if Fox is willing to overpay or, or up up the bid, or, or NBC is willing to up the bid, CBS, it's in the SEC's best interest to get in a bidding war for the playoff. It's not in anybody's best interest to just give it to ESPN. I tend to agree with you. I tend to no, agree. No, no, but tend to, that's how math works. I, yes, understandably, but when you are in bed with somebody and you are um, working out your um, deals – that's not like, that's not how listen the only way the only person that would want that would be Greg Sankey and that's if ESPN's given him a uh, table money under the table if, or, if ESPN is bribing Greg Sankey because it doesn't help the schools at all it doesn't help a single school at all well it helps all of those SEC schools if ESPN is upping the money for their like for them because no, they, they have they to can't, renegotiate I don't think this they deal can contractually do that no, they have to renegotiate this deal right now if they get this playoff done well, now. Hang on. hang on. If if ESPN ups the, the SEC deal and the playoff deal have to be separate. Yes. Because they're two separate entities. The playoff is for all the schools that might be in the playoff regardless of how many games there is, right? Correct. The SEC has its own deal with them. 
that has to be done separately. You're telling me that if ESPN, if the SEC pushes and strong arms everybody else to get this done, we'll give the SEC more money. But if they don't, we're going to give them less money. I'd call their bluff on that shit. I, I didn't, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm not arguing that aspect of it. This I'm is just where saying. you treat, listen, this is where the SEC walks into ESPN and they do exactly what the NFL does. They put a bag over their head, they put a gun in their mouth, and they tell them, this is how much you're going to pay us. There is no con- conference negotiations. This is what we won't sign the damn paper. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what Roger Goodell has done to Fox, NBC, and CBS, for, and ESPN, by the way, for years. All right, There is no negotiation. He walks in the room, he puts a gun to their head, and he says, sign the paper. Because we're the biggest entity in the world. Nobody, nobody brings eyeballs to the table like we do. You, Sign yes, the paper. Yes. This is how much we want. If you're, if you're the SEC, that's exactly how you negotiate your deal with ESPN. And then you walk away. And you let the other entities make ESPN bid that shit up so you can make more money. Yeah. Because so that- you're going to make more on the top of everything. It's one thing to have a partnership. It's another thing to be corrupt. If you get involved with collusion and corruption, the only things that can happen are bad. You might be able to make a little bit of money, but if anybody finds out about any type of collusion like that, all these contracts go away and people involved go to jail. Yeah. So why would you risk it when you're making billions to make a few more million? That's not worth it. And see, we, we talk as if we know, um, but I mean, these people do this every day. Well, greed, then those people are stupid. Uh, well, agreed on that. But it, greed is a crazy thing, man. Like once you got this much, you're always thinking mm, maybe. I understand maybe wanting more. more. I totally get the concept of always wanting more. But at some point in time, that doesn't make any sense to me for the SEC to try and get ESPN a cheaper deal, and ESPN's gonna you know scratch their back on the back end with more money to them. No, no, no. I want to get our TV deal done, and then we'll we'll address the playoff thing as is. That we, that's the only way I would do that. We will see exactly what ends up happening with that because this this could you know the package. If well. Sankey if Sankey does anything other than that, then I'm going to be very disappointed in Sankey. I'm just going to be very disappointed in him. I like that's not, gonna that I, it's gonna say a lot. It's one thing to work really hard to make your conference a lot of money and make yourself a lot of money. I'm for that. I'm all for that. Yeah. But trying trying to help ESPN make more money, so you know, because it's the, that only benefits individuals. That's not going to benefit these schools. I guarantee you, the money that they save the ESPN is all going to end up going to a few presidents that are of value, and it's going to go to Sankey. It's going to go to people's pocket, direct pocket, not these schools. These schools aren't going to see a dime of it. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.